I would say a professional stance from Kenny Pickett, but we still have to assess our thoughts on the Kenny Pickett portion of the Steelers quarterback moves and really what the trade means for Philadelphia, Peter. Yeah, I, I thought he got the unfair part of the weekend in that there was almost like they kicked him on his way out. Mm. It was You read the news reports and it was like Kenny Pickett balked at the trade and you know they didn't like his reaction so they shipped him off. I, I think it was actually a three-piece move here by Pittsburgh and that they're like, if we can get Russ at this number... And then we have Russ, and then we could also get Fields, and well, then we don't need Pickett, and we'll go on from there. I don't think it was necessary to also, you know, have him get, you know, when a car drives by and there's a puddle and just sprays you. Like, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Pickett didn't need that on the way out, and I didn't think that was necessarily fair to him. So now he goes to, to Philadelphia, a casualty of a maneuver that I think the Pittsburgh Steelers saw from 30,000 feet, and they were like, Pickett doesn't make sense in this situation, but Russ and Fields do. Goes there, and I, I look at what his career in Pittsburgh was. Short-lived, obviously. Rattled with an ink, ankle injury this past season. But one thing you could say about Kenny Pickett, least interceptions in the league, doesn't turn the ball over, doesn't kill you, and is a reliable young quarterback. And when it was mattering most at the end of that rookie season, remember the Christmas uh, Eve night game against the Raiders? Mm -hmm. and, and it mattered most against the Broncos. Like, this guy did play well in the clutch. Even last year against the Ravens down the, down the stretch, he found George Pickens on that deep pass. So I'm still bullish on Kenny Pickett. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds crazy. We're talking about backup quarterback for a team. But I look at Jalen Hurts and the financial investment they made to him last year. $55 million, give him all this money. And then we had a veteran backup in, in Mariota as his guy and his mentor. Now it's a little different. Now there's another young quarterback making way less who's got a little chip on his shoulder. What does that mean in the quarterback's room? What's the dynamic? How does Kellen Moore handle that? And does Pe Kenny Pickett, who grew up an Eagles fan and had the Carson Wentz jersey when they took a photo of him and they found that photo, like, how does he use that as motivation to maybe rebuild not only his career but the narrative around his career that he was a salty loser when they went to Mason Rudolph and that he was also, you know, handled the Russell Wilson signing in a way that wasn't, you know, fit for a first-round pick. I don't like that narrative. I think that's a rough situation for anyone, and I wish it wasn't the case with him. I will say one thing about Pittsburgh. They made these moves. I did flips for Omar Khan yesterday, and I really do think it was an upgrade at the quarterback position. Wide receiver has to be next. Like, these okay. guys need some weapons. George Pickens is one wide receiver, but you traded away Deontay mm -hmm. Johnson. I, I'm not done with Pittsburgh. Like, I don't look at Pittsburgh, and yesterday we said, did they narrow the gap in the, in the AFC North? I'm like, they got better, and I love Patrick Queen on defense, but they need another wide receiver, and that might mean trading for Brandon Ayuk. That me, might mean trading for another veteran somewhere mm. else. Like, I don't, like, they weren't in on the Keenan Allen deal. They weren't trying to get in on Keenan, Keenan Allen, especially if you had these plans at quarterback. So watching the wide receiver position, whether it be veteran or one, moving up for one of these young draft picks, I think wide receiver is huge for Pittsburgh before we kind of give them an A-plus for this offseason. Yeah, they brought in Allen Robinson last year, released him this offseason. They've signed Van Jefferson. So to your point, that kind of veteran guy I outside. I wanted Justin Jefferson, not yeah. Van Jefferson. Okay? That's <laughs> there you go. Good, Peter. Do you think there's a chance Kenny Pickett can push Jalen Hurts. Any chance that Kenny Pickett, they're like, all right, well, if Jalen Hurts doesn't play well this year, maybe we go to Kenny Pickett? Or do you think it's more of a sign that, hey, we need a young backup. Jalen Hurts was banged up last year. Somebody we can put in and feel confident in. I think the latter. I think yeah. it's Jalen Hurts' team. He's taken him to a Super Bowl. He was an MVP consideration, and he wasn't terrible last year, and the season went awry. But you look at Kenny Pickett. Offensive line deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Multiple offensive coordinators. Weird situation last year with two coordinators at one point. The mm -hmm. fired offensive coordinator. Yeah. Like, I don't think he was necessarily put in the best position for success. And we love what Pittsburgh, the logo, means. And we love what the Steelers' institutional knowledge. And Tomlin's obviously a great coach. But from an offensive standpoint, I'm not going to judge Kenny Pickett's career on, on those two years. I'd like to give it another chapter. And do I think he's going to challenge Jalen Hurts? I think he's going to push Jalen Hurts. Push but I don't think it's a question who's the QB1. Yeah, I would agree. And when you talk about Kenny Pickett in Pittsburgh, you think about it, he got there, and it was the battle between him and Trubisky a season ago. And we talked about it. I remember Kyle sitting in that seat saying, no, it's going to be Kenny Pickett. And he has some comeback wins. And enough to excite you about his future. Then this season, to your point, didn't throw interceptions, but also didn't make a lot of plays on the offensive side of the ball, taking chances and making enough plays down the field so the Steelers move on from Kenny Pickett which made me start to think of kind of the larger scale when you look at quarterbacks and whether it was this past draft or the year before that in 2021 so many of these young quarterbacks have been given an opportunity some career starts some success but have moved on from their teams that they were drafted by this is 
2021 to 2022 draft, and you look at the career starts for these guys. Kenny Pickett, third on our list, just 24 starts. Is 24 starts in the NFL enough to evaluate the quarterback position when you tie in hand, to your point, the change in play caller midseason in his second year? For Mac Jones at the top of that list, three different offensive coordinators throughout, and so many guys on that list drafted. Trey Lance, third overall. Mm -hmm. Mac Jones, 15th, drafted so high. Justin Fields, 11th, and none of these guys remain on their same team. You can throw Zach Wilson in there, who's the number two pick by the New York Jets, and they can't even trade him right now, and if they could, he'd be on a different team right now. So as I just look at the overall landscape, we've talked so much over the years of head coaches getting somewhere and not having enough time to establish culture and bring in their system and really be able to cultivate it and move the guys forward where next thing you know, they're let go after two years, three years. You're just like, well, that's not enough time. You keep hitting reset. For the quarterback position, it seems as though we're doing that right now. We're not giving these guys a chance to truly develop under one coach, under one system, and see what their talents and abilities are. We're moving on and just like, well, you know what? Kenny Pickett, 24 starts, wasn't good enough. Ship him off to Philly. So that, to me, as I look at it, it's bigger than just Kenny Pickett. I don't know that there was enough to say, you know what? This guy isn't a starter in the league. He cannot lead our franchise. He hasn't shown us enough. Justin Fields got a lot of starts, a lot of losses. Wasn't enough, and they moved on from him. So very interesting to see that dynamic as we continue to move forward mm -hmm. with the quarterbacks in the draft. Kyle, as you look at it, the Kenny Pickett, Phil Eagles, Pittsburgh, what's your thoughts? I mean, I'm hearing Kenny Pickett say, you know, it's time, it was time. <laughs> What, what are you talking about? You just got there five seconds ago, Kenny. It's not time at all. How many? I mean, I don't even know the numbers in front of me. How many first-round quarterbacks are gone after two seasons? Like, two seasons where there wasn't crazy controversy, there weren't massive injuries, it was just gone. I, I, I am blown away by this new Steelers mode of operations. And, Peter, you mentioned Omar Khan and, like, He's just like, I don't have time for this anymore. I got to change, and I got to change quickly. I've talked about this a lot this week. They have gone seven years without a playoff win in Pittsburgh. That is the longest stretch for that team since the merger. In 17 Mike Tomlin coached years, in only four of them have they won a playoff game. Four out of 17. And in the playoff losses they've had have been bad. Remember, they were down 28 nothing to the Browns. And I really feel like this offseason was this point where there was a median somewhere in Pittsburgh and there was a table that was flipped over and maybe there was a, throw, a phone thrown against the wall. There was no effort of like, you know, we drafted this first round pick and Kenny and he represents Pittsburgh. Let's just figure it out. We're going to bring in Russ and this. And they're just like, fine, go. Two years, done. Deontay Johnson, you don't block. You know, there's, there's some things to show up on tape about you. Go. Have fun being on the Panthers. It's an unbelievable time right now where they usually go so slow and instead they're so we're getting right to it. But I, I think there's this piece of video that's excited to be looked forward to this. The, the Steelers fans should look forward to watching and should be excited about Deshaun Elliott. It's this safety they signed from the Dolphins. He's been in Miami. He's been in Detroit and he was in Baltimore. He is now in Pittsburgh. And when he showed up to his press conference, like this is the goods right here. This is what you want. What was the, the Steelers pitch to you about why here's the right fit? What what made you want to sign here? The logo. It's, this is championship football. This is the culture. This is real, real smash mouth, real gritty, cold weather game football. And I mean, why else would you not want to play here? Growing up, watching um, Troy Palomalu play, uh, the Steel Curtain, like this is real football. I'm excited to be here. It's not that hard. Point to the logo that say this is real football and mention one of the Steelers greats and then come out and make plays. That is a guy who used to be in Baltimore. That is a guy who Patrick Queen personally showed up and recruited when he had been a Steeler for about five minutes. I don't know yet if it's going to work. I don't know if they're going to win two playoff games next year, but I like that they're not okay with winning no playoff games for another year. Kenny Pickett, gone. See you later. Irrelevance that we will not talk about Kenny Pickett for a long time. We'll talk about the Steelers. We'll talk about the Eagles. Moving on, though.